This is Cybert signing into Command & Conquer Remastered. Tip Don over here on the top left-hand corner, moving in their MCV to the north. This is Tratos. Going to be playing as the blue GDI, I believe. And on the right side, playing as the Tan Nod. It's Adam. Now, I do have to confess, this match was actually pointed to me by Wayward. Of course, waywardstrategy.com. Great, uh, great and entertaining strategy writer. He also does uh, some some of that RTS podcast with GG the Machine from time to time, and he's the one who actually uh, pointed out this game in a tweet, and it looked interesting. And so I thought I'd cast it. But there are actually a couple of people who do remaster casts. So if you are enjoying the remaster casts. And want some other people who uh, focus on it a little more. Uh, although Wayward also does Gregu and stuff. Wow, right into the attack helicopter for Adam. As our early game gets rolling. And uh, right into an Orca. Actually, two Orcas for Tratos. So, Orcas versus attack helicopters. And they are both going to be aware of this fact. As, of course, Adam running around the map killing everything with his attack helicopter and the orcas being scouted there. Anyways, uh, yeah, if you want some more remaster action, there are some other people who do it. And uh, you may actually find them preferable to my remaster. So, you can uh, go ahead and have some good old remaster times if that is your jam. In the meantime, uh, players moving their MCV next to this little... Outcropping does provide a little bit of defensive barrier, but not so much against airborne units as uh, normally with ground units. You have to navigate around that little patch of whatever, so one side of your MCV is protected. But in this case, this attack helicopter going to town on this... That's four orcas lifting off at the same time. Going to town on the on the power plant, but four orcas are going to be trying to target down this airstrip, and they may actually get it here as there is literally no response from Adam. They get some good damage out, but one power plant is about to go down as Adam is taking down Trados' power plant. A couple of Grenadiers showing up. They are not quite going to be a match, and these Orcas should be able to refuel. And, uh, well, they decide to not take down the bike. Five buggies, rather. Five Orcas going to be coming in here to finish off the airfield, or the airstrip, rather. And it does go down. Five Orcas and then a bunch of Grenadiers going to be the choice for Trado. So he is not only not going just the tank spam route or like uh, trying to trying to turtle until he gets out advanced guard towers. He is going Orcas and infantry. The one bike does get targeted down and of course with no airstrip that may actually be the only bike for the next little while. If he had sniped a power plant as well that would have been amazing. But uh, you know he's done all right. Uh, fifth Orca, oh, fifth Orca got left on the helipad. I was like, only four of the Orcas took off. They left their friend, and they did indeed. Buggy's going to be coming in. Once again, the power plant has been rebuilt. And the Buggy's with the attack helicopter will actually chew up this uh, power plant pretty darn quickly. War Factory finally up and running for Tratos. Adam going to be pulling a little bit further north. The entire southern half of the map, as is common, gets completely neglected. Neglected. Sam site is down for Adam. He's going to have a little bit of that anti-air defense. Orcas do manage to take out one buggy, but not necessarily much more than that. Airstrip is finally back up as we are up to like six harvesters or four refineries and uh, possibly some extra harvesters, but to three refineries only on the side of Tratos. So a little bit a uh, little bit lacking in that he just sold off his MCV. Uh, well, this engineer, engineers have been known to do a thing or two in uh, in Tib Dawn, but we'll have to see exactly what that catches the air the helicopter on the pad. And, of course, completely away from the SAM site, which means it was just up to those attack bikes, and they did not do enough damage to actually shut anything down. Engineer just hanging out in the south here, and this is a great move while he moves his uh, his tanks and his infantry in the north. He may actually have to swing back around to defend his home from this bike buggy, which is poised there in the north. A couple of flamers going to be moving forward. 
They are not necessarily going to get off the big hits that they were hoping for. But the Grenadier is doing a bit of damage there as uh, everything does explode. Bike Buggy going to be moving in infantry and a couple of tanks down here to potentially respond. But no, it's going to be no response from Trados. This could just turn into a wonky base trade situation, in which case the Engineer in the south may actually be the Kingpin and maybe what everything hinges on. Another airstrip about to go down as the tanks targeting down, but the defense of the bikes is not good enough, and the bikes and the buggies do get cleaned up. Going now for the refineries as Trados is doing what he can to clean up everything that Adam has, and Adam's attack has been shut down. The tanks and the reinforcing infantry were enough, but no parade push across the map which means this attack is going to expire sooner or later against the defenses of Adam. And I guess that's actually going to be it against the defense of Adam, but really just his infantry is they're the ones actually getting the shots off against those tanks. The second army has been constructed throughout this. Trados' economy has been going strong enough that he has been able to build up a second wave, and this is going to be where it gets a little bit difficult for Adam. Also, I think he just sold off more buildings back home. Ooh, Grenadiers and Flamers going to be mixing here and not boating well for Trados as he loses big squadrons of his infantry. A couple of rocket squads, or rocket infantry, still remaining on the map. Bike Buggy as well, but the Conyard is going to be the thing targeted as Adam will be completely negating or neglecting to defend it. And that's actually the MCV down one of the Hand of Nods. There's still two Hand of Nods remaining. So the production is going to be absolutely fine in terms of infantry. And there is, of course, still an airstrip, but no service depot or repair pad, whatever it is actually called to rebuild the MCV. As the Orcas come in for an additional sweep against that airstrip, doing a good bit of damage as the tanks are going to be the thing to actually finish it off. The tanks navigating a little bit further north and goodbye airstrip, goodbye potential almost last hand of nod but there will still be one hand of nod and it's going to be all infantry all day from here on out one single buggy trying to do what he can against the harvesters of trados but it is not going to be enough and trados won't actually get the second hand of nod he does lose everything there as the orca comes in for an additional strike the bikes try to target it down the orca doesn't have enough ammo to finish off the hand of nod a couple of flamethrowers going to be able to clear out a good chunk of that infantry as trados marches forward a couple of more tanks and the infantry once again super clumped up meaning these flamethrowers are extremely effective Still that engineer in the south just hanging out, not doing anything. The turret and the tanks going to be fighting against each other as all of the infantry get cleaned up. Once again, the flamethrowers by Adam, extremely effective. And in there, finally, the barracks does go down after a long time of uh, slapping that barracks. It did finally get eliminated. One single rifleman, uh, the wrong color. A little bit of a glitch there. Not sure why that happens. Uh, it happens in both Red Alert and Tib Dawn, and people always point it out. It's just a visual glitch. Another tank going to be getting targeted down. The nice thing for Adam is that he has six grand in the bank, so his economy never slowed down this whole game. Of course, his production has been rather lacking, so we we're in a situation where one player has all of the production and infrastructure, but no cash, and the other player has no production or infrastructure, but all the cash. And as a result... It's actually turning into a weird infantry v infantry game. Could also pull along the harvesters to try and tank some shots or do some crushing as the grenadiers clear up the entirety of that infantry squad and the reinforcements are on the way. They head directly into the Tiberian patch, which isn't necessarily the best idea, and they're also super clumped up, which means they actually suicide themselves and their friends as the engineer moves a little bit closer, gets close to a flamethrower as well, and Adam does not want to be one of those players who gets caught off guard by an engineer as he, I guess, selects all army or something? I don't know what that was, but he actually just, uh, he actually just bypassed that engineer. He almost killed off the engineer, but then he didn't. And that might be a little bit unfortunate. Two Humvees as the response to this infantry attack, and that actually will be fine, especially with the control of Trados. He's drawing the infantry into the Tiberium and just kiting away from the infantry little bit by little bit. And uh, we can't actually see it because of the UI, unfortunately. The, uh, the bottom bar 
just does not disappear. So this is actually a great move by Trados. I wish there was uh, more reason and more opportunity to do that kind of micro. Kiting with a vehicle and pulling the infantry into the Tiberium. But there, uh, in most games, that sort of stuff doesn't really matter. There isn't a whole lot of uh, opportunity or use. And the engineer is going to run right into the waiting guns of some riflemen. Although the Humvee is actually kind of body blocking for this engineer. And actually, no, the Humvee gets taken out. But the engineer will actually escape. And I don't actually remember if they ever patched the engineer. I know there was at some point talk of because uh, Tib Dawn games could swing so quickly with, the, with how quick the engineer moves and how you can just jump into the buildings and unlike Red Alert where the building has to be low health, otherwise the engineer just does a bit of damage to the building. I know there was talk of patching it to match Red Alert. I don't know if that actually ever happened. Harvester's going to be coming in for the crush because they're not good at harvesting anyway, so you might as well go in for the crush. Kill off a couple of infantry, and this attack is actually being pushed back. Adam actually has enough to push back the majority of that attack. More Humvees on the way for Trados, and he's also keeping a small group of infantry and a Humvee back home just to defend against any attacks in the south. One single tank hanging out there in the bottom right-hand corner of the map. Trados choosing not to use that, and the infantry going to be rushing in. It is an ill-fated attack, though, as they, uh, they can't really accomplish anything there. As long as Trados doesn't really stuff up the uh, t the defense, then he should be able to close out this game, uh, quote-unquote, sooner or later, and perhaps uh, infantry against Humvees, it might actually be later, as Adam, again, he's got the cash. He can actually produce the stuff. Trados has the, has the tech advantage. I mean, Humvees versus the infantry. The Humvees definitely have the advantage. The infantry are going to try and bum rush the War Factory. Just barely don't make it through. And this is a pretty overwhelming number of Humvees. That was a great attempt there by Adam. If he gets, if he gets the War Factory, then it actually is pretty much his game. Well, he can't necessarily deal with the army. But if he could deal with the army and kill the War Factory, then it is his game. And really, this is what he needs is, yeah, some kind of dual-pronged attack, some kind of move that would allow him to attack two areas at once, and kill off one of these armies. Because if he could kill off the army, he could go for the infrastructure. But that is all irrelevant as Trados takes the game. And uh, that will pretty much do it for this game. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It was a weird and wonky one for sure, starting off with that attack helicopter and those orcas, and then finishing off with a kind of low-tech, although high economy for one player, finisher and ultimately the gdi are victorious suck it brotherhood of nod and that will do it for this game thank you all very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and this is cyber signing out